Now, we can use all kinds of terms, getting rich, becoming wealthy. Sometimes rich and wealthy is a little, a little bit heavy, or someone might say, I don't need to be rich. But, you know, rich is always in each person's concept of rich. You know, it used to be a long time ago, rich was a, being a millionaire, but, you know, a millionaire, a million dollars is not that much anymore. So everything is relative. But someone says, well, I don't want to think of myself as pursuing trying to get rich. So, you know, there's other language we can use from a variety of semantics. You know, we can choose what's more comfortable. Uh, becoming wealthy. The term wealthy in everybody's mind is probably a little different of what the amount is or what the accumulation is. So, so that's interesting. Rich or wealthy. But here's one concept I think everybody can comprehend, even the kids, and that's to someday be financially independent. Being able to live from the income of your personal resources, that's a goal everybody should set. Now, if you're a little late coming to this plan, you know, you might have to, you know, do a little more stretching than the average person would. But starting at age 15, it's easy to, to pencil out where with a normal average income and the increases every year uh, to be financially independent by age 35, 40 at the latest, if you have a good plan. Now, the reason why the money all disappears is because not because it doesn't exist. It's because the money isn't put in the right plan. Now, money is not the only value. But make this note, it is one value. It's not the only one, but it is one. Money is not the only measure of success, but it is one measure. That your current income is a measure of your personal value to the marketplace. If your current value to the marketplace is $5 an hour, you get the $5. So not that a person is only worth $5, but their value to the marketplace is only worth $5. But it's possible to very quickly change those numbers by changing your value. But the numbers do illustrate the value. We cannot leave that concept out. So somebody says, you mean where I am financially is an illustration of who I am? And the answer is yes. Now, it's not the only measure. I'm not saying it's the only one, but I'm saying it is one. There's a lot of other ways to measure a person's value as a father, person's value as a mother, person's value as a friend, as a colleague, of course. But we can't leave the money out. Now, here's why money is an easy measure. It's easy to count. Let's count. See, there's nothing better than the truth. You don't need to fool with the truth. It is so dynamic in uncovering the errors of our ways and helping us to set up new disciplines to change it all, starting today, starting overnight, starting any time. Now, you could wait to start a plan for a couple of years, but why not do it now? Some people have to wrestle with, and I had a few questions on, is it okay to strive to be rich? Is it okay to want to be wealthy? Is it okay to go for it? I had to come to grips with that. Some people say, well, it'd be better to renounce all worldly goods and just live a very poverty, you know, spiritual life. And that's one concept. I've got another concept. Try this on for size. If you could do better, should you? That's an interesting concept to consider. Why would you leave the biggest share of your life unexplored in terms of personal development and what that might have achieved, either in the marketplace or at home as a father? Someone says, well, I don't, you know, I'm not going for being rich. I, I don't think that's really the healthy thing to do. So everybody has to wrestle with that. And I understand that. But I think one conclusion we could come to with a good, simple, practical plan, there's no reason why you can't accumulate the resources to be financially independent. Lydia Colon invests $1 in her enterprise, selling a product she believed in. Here was her first investment, desperation. She says, my kids are hungry. I got to make this work. If this doesn't work, what will I do? That's called great incentive. My friend Bill Bailey went to Chicago as a teenager after he got out of high school. And the first job he got was night janitor. Someone says, Bill, why would you settle for night janitor? He said, malnutrition. 
right? You work at whatever you can possibly get when you get hungry, right? You, you go to work somewhere at night, Jenner, don't matter where it is. Now he's rich and, you know, he's financially independent, but first job, night janitor. Now here's the next investment she made. Determination, I will. I will find someone. First she said, I must find someone. Desperation. Second, she said, I will find someone before this first day is over. Sure enough, she found someone. And she said, if it works once, it'll work again. But the next person said, no. Next person said, no. Now what must you invest? Courage. Courage is more valuable than money. If you've only got one dollar and a lot of courage, I'm telling you, you've got a good future ahead of you. Courage in spite of. Humans can do the most incredible things no matter what happens. Tell us about it. Haven't we heard the stories? There's probably some recent ones from Kosovo that we haven't even heard yet that are some of the most classic, unbelievable stories of being in the depths of hell and finally making it out. It's humans. You can't sell humans short. Courage. In spite of. Not because of, but in spite of. Now, once she's sold three or four and gotten going, here's what now takes over. Ambition. Wow, if I can sell three, I can sell 33. If I can sell 33, I can sell 103. Wow, now she's now dazzled by her own dreams of the future. Try this one on for size, faith. Now she begins to believe, I've got a good product. This is probably a good company. And she then starts to believe in herself. Lydia. Single mother, two kids, no job. By gosh, I'm going to pull it off. Her self-esteem starts to soar. These are investments that are unmatched. Money can't touch it. What if you had a million dollars and no courage? You'd be poor. You wouldn't be rich. Now, here's the next one. It's the reason why she's a millionaire today. Ingenuity. Putting your brains to work. Probably up until now, you've put about one-tenth of your brain power to work. What if you employed the other nine-tenths? <laughs> you can't believe what can happen. Humans can come up with the most intriguing things to do. Ingenuity. What's ingenuity worth? A fortune. It's more valuable than money. All you need is a dollar and plenty of ingenuity. Figuring out a way to make it work, make it work, make it work. Next. Heart and soul. I mean, what's a substitute for heart and soul? It ain't money. Money can't buy heart and soul. And heart and soul is more valuable than, than a million dollars. A million dollars without heart and soul, you have no life. You are ineffective. But heart and soul is like magic. It's what we call the unseen magic that moves people. Moves people to buy, moves people to, to make decisions, moves people to act moves people to respond heart and soul next personality you just got to spruce up and sharpen up your own personality you've got plenty of personality just get it developed to where it's, it's effective every day it's effective no matter who you talk to whether it's a child or whether it's a business person whether it's a rich person poor person a unique personality that is at home anywhere here's the ultimate investment charisma Ultimate sophistication, charisma, with a touch of humility. All of that list is more valuable than money. With one dollar and the list I just gave you, the world is yours. I mean, it belongs to you. Whatever piece of it you desire, whatever development you wish for your life. Capital, there is some kind of capital and there is some kind of capital. But here's what you can do with a dollar and the rest of this investment of yourself and your person. You can secure your fortune. Key phrase, you lack not the resources. You don't lack the mental resources. You don't lack the financial resources. Here's the key to the dollar. Depends on where you invest it. Depends on where you spend it. I mean, what are you going to do with this dollar? You say, well, it's only a dollar. No, you don't understand. You can, if you wish, you can turn it instead of into a Coca-Cola, you could turn it into capital. And a dollar turned into capital instead of a Coca-Cola, what's the difference? The difference is a fortune. The Coca-Cola is soon gone, but the fortune lasts forever. 
everybody's got the money. It depends on where you put it. We all have desires. We all want to do something worthwhile. We all want to be meaningful to our family. We all want to be recognized. We all want to have satisfaction. We were meant for enterprise. We've all got those similar desires. But here's what people are looking for that you've got now in your hands to take to the marketplace, and that's called ways and means. Ways and means to go from here to there. Ways and means to go for, from where I am to where I want to finally be. Ways and means to take what I've got, because I can't take any more than what I've got and turn it into more than I've got. What is the magic of that? And the magic is to find opportunity which provides for you the ways and the means. So that journey of five years that I was with Mr. Shof before he died was the most extraordinary time of my life in terms of business, in terms of income, in terms of life change, uh, in terms of the ideas he exposed for me as far as leadership is concerned, understanding the marketplace, understanding banks and money, understanding capitalism, understanding people, how to work with people, communication, all that stuff I learned during that five years. And I've applied it in many different ways. And I've diversified my enterprises now around the world. But the drama that affected my life all those years ago that happened to me during that five-year period between when I was 25 and 30, that was the drama of my life. And I know that some of you probably, you're just now beginning this drama. Maybe not at age 25, but it doesn't matter what age. Make this note, any six years you want to. I did it between ages 25 and 31. Went from zero to a millionaire. Any six years you pick, you can dramatically affect your life. You can dramatically change course. You can dramatically alter the outcome of your daily input. Any six years you want to pick. Because once in a while someone says, well, Mr. Owen, I've heard your story between ages 25 and 31. All this drama happened for you, but I'm 40. And I says, then you do it between 40 and 46. So make the note, any six years you pick, any five years you pick, six years you pick, here's what any six years you pick can be, drastically different than the last six. Being able to design your own future, being able to make it as big as you want to, take your time if you want to, slow as you want to, fast as you want to, build it as big as you want to, as wide as you want to, as high as you want to, go as far as you want to, cash in as much as you want to. This is called the American dream coming true. Yes, there's the American dream of the young lad that started in the mail room and now he's the chief executive of the corporation. But how many stories like there are there? There's not millions. So here was the, one of the first lessons I learned. Profits are better than wages. It's noble to earn wages and make a living, but it's exciting to earn profits and make a fortune. Because you can earn a profit long before you can earn a wage, legitimately. Almost everybody wishes for that. If I could have a business, right? If I could be my own boss, if I could come and go as I pleased, if I could, you know, grow as fast as I wanted to grow, a lot faster than I can do on an ordinary orthodox, orthodox job. So it's easy to teach these little principles. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living, profits make you a fortune. This is what I taught in Russia. Active capital means buy, sell, or sell, buy. It depends on your circumstances. If you have to sell, buy, you sell, buy. If you can do it, then you buy, sell. Or whatever way to, you know, earn a profit. If you teach kids the splendid joy of being rich, if you teach kids the unbelievable power of being financially independent, if you teach them the unbelievable feeling of being capable, of having skills, of having influence, of being somebody, they'll go for it. Now, if they don't go for that, they're going to substitute it with something else. Something else we really don't care for. Some other kind of high, rather than earning money, rather than being responsible rather than the joy of giving service, rather than all these joys. They're, they're probably going to go for something else. So we've got to keep their minds busy with stuff like this. Figure out ways to get this money out there so that it earns you this. And find out some ways to start earning profit yourself.
some of the notes I taught in uh, Russia on uh, capitalism versus communism. Here's what capital is. The Russians did not understand this because they weren't taught. Here's what capital is. Capital is any value you set aside. And the easiest to identify is your money. Any value you set aside to be invested in an enterprise that brings value to the public with the hopes of making a profit. Now, the reason why that was foreign to the Russians was because up until the fall of communism, making a profit was illegal. You couldn't go into business for yourself. You had to work for the all-knowing state. Everybody was employed by the state because the state owned all the resources. So you couldn't make a profit. Now, when I give this simple little analysis, the Russians go crazy. They said, well, we could have done that for the last 85 years. That's right. We could have built a dynamic society like America. That's right. But now you've got to start setting aside some value to be invested in an enterprise that you're responsible for, for bringing value to the marketplace with the hope of making a profit. That's called capitalism. Now, here's what else I told them. Here's what you can set aside that's more important than money. Now, this money that you set aside is like seed corn for the farmer. What would you do with seed corn? Number one, protect it with a vengeance. Here's what you wouldn't do with it. Spend it. Here's what you wouldn't do with it. Give it away. You can't do that with your capital. You cannot be benevolent with your capital. With your profits, yes. With your capital, no. This is seed corn. Here's what you wouldn't do with your seed corn. Eat it. Because now you've got no crop come harvest. So you wouldn't spend it and you wouldn't lose it. And you wouldn't give it away and you wouldn't eat it. It's to be set aside and protected because it's the investment for the future. To be kept for the time when you invest it in an enterprise that brings value to the marketplace with the hopes of making a profit. And this enterprise bringing value to the marketplace with the hope of making a profit is just as simple as a child that buys a bottle of soap for $2 and sells it for three. He brings value to the marketplace by taking this $2 of capital and going next door to Mrs. Jones and selling her a bottle of soap for $3. Now he's got $3, but two is capital still set aside to invest in the next bottle. That is capitalism. But here's what's exciting. It's not all there is to capitalism. Time is more valuable than capital. Time you set aside not to be eaten, not to be wasted, not to be given away. Time you set aside to be invested in an enterprise that brings value to the marketplace with the hope of making a profit. Now we have capital money and we have capital time. How valuable is time? Time properly invested is worth a fortune. Time wasted is worth devastation. But it's worth a fortune if you invest it properly. Everybody's got the money. Everybody's got the time. Everybody's got the imagination and the mental and the spiritual and the social resources. Everybody's got the stuff. It depends on how you use it and where you put it and where you invest it, how it turns out for you and for your life.